A very common issue you will run into with NativeScript Angular is times when your view will not update when data is changed. This is a very common issue. Uh, I'll show you an example here that uses the Sample Groceries app on the right, and it actually is wired up to Firebase, and I'm going to make a change in Firebase here and hit enter, which should fire the change and actually should update the view here. And if I show you the log, you'll see that a hit gets logged out. And if we look at the code, you'll see that that hit is actually being logged out at the right moment. So this is puzzling on the surface. We can see a Firebase event listener is wired up to call this event and uh, trigger these changes whenever the change occurs, whenever the sync happens with Firebase. And we can see the hits happening, uh, but our view is not updating. So this is uh, related to the fact that with Angular and third-party callbacks, you want to run them through the zone. Okay, so the zone is a way to actually get those change detections to occur and actually have view uh, changes updated. And there's two ways you can do that, actually. With NativeScript Angular, the runtime loads a global called zoned callback. And you can actually declare that if you're using TypeScript at the top of your file. You can declare it as a function. And this will make sure that your TSC compiler does not complain uh, that this is undefined. And you can now use that and wrap your function with this zoned callback. And again, this is loaded at runtime by the native script runtime, and it will make sure that this callback is run through the zone, and this time when we sync the changes from the back end, you'll see the view update because it will run that callback through the zone. So let's take a look at that. And now with zoned callback in the mix, when we make a change here, we can see our view is immediately updated here. Let's do another one here. Again, view immediately updated. And so it works really well. So zoned callback is definitely a savior in this case. And you want to use it when you're wiring up third-party services that kind of go outside of uh, the realm of Angular services. They're just integrated third-party plugins that are making callbacks back into your code. So you just want to make sure that those are run back in the zone. I want to show you one other way that this could be done that uh, it just depends on your situation. You may want to use ng-zone. So you can actually inject ng-zone and zone callback does pretty much the same thing that ng-zone does as well. So you also have the option to inject ng-zone and you can run this callback through ng-zone. Now to do it all in this line you would need a setup that is more like this uh, because the return value of run is a promise so you couldn't do the ng-zone run all in line. So it's uh, ng-zone.run and then you want to uh, run your function inside of uh, the run function here. And that will make sure that the view updates as well. So that is another option. You could also wrap your callback interior itself, the code in here, with this.ngzone.run. So that's you could wrap everything that way. So again, just an op another option. Um, it just depends on your scenario. If you are working on a heavily web and native script shared code base, then injecting ng zone may be best because zoned callback is only available in the native script runtime. So in those cases, you may just want to inject ng zone and use it that way. But uh, that should solve a lot of the issues and some of the puzzling things that you may run into when you're dealing with your view not updating.